chúng ta sẽ nghe về cái uh, các cái nội dung mà liên quan đến uh, ác quy uh, thì thì là cái vấn đề mà uh, ác quy như thế nào và thu hồi tái chế hay tái sử dụng ác quy ra làm sao uh, trong cái uh, xe điện thì là đây là một trong những những cái nội dung rất quan trọng tại vì là không những là là ác quy đảm bảo cái cái an toàn cho vận hành phương tiện điện mà nó còn đảm bảo những cái uh, yêu cầu đối với cái ô nhiễm môi trường hay là hạn chế hay là khi mà chúng ta quản lý tốt được cái uh, các cái nội dung có liên quan đến ắc quy thì là chúng ta có thể là tối ưu hóa được các cái um, các cái giá trị mà xe điện có thể đóng góp cho uh, cái quá cái cái cái, cái tiến trình phát triển của nghĩa giảm phát thải khí nhà kính hay là hay là gây ô nhiễm môi trường thì uh, rất là nhiều các cái uh, um, cái nghiên cứu về cái 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 tác động của ắc quy đối với môi trường thì là trong cái quá trình à, sử dụng xe điện thì ắc quy sẽ quản lý thế nào sẽ được thu hồi tái chế ra làm sao thì chúng ta sẽ à, tiếp theo thì chúng ta sẽ nghe một bài của tiến sĩ Horizon Gitano Bris à, ông tiến sĩ Horizon thì là có bằng cơ khí tại à, đại học à, Colorado à, của hoặc à, và ông là giảng viên tại Đại học Colorado từ năm 2002 đến 2004 và từ năm 2008 đến nay thì ông thành lập và điều hành công ty công nghệ Focus Applied Technology một trong những công ty sản xuất động cơ và hệ thống kiểm tra đo lường điều khiển động cơ phương tiện giao thông và ông còn thường xuyên giảng dạy tại nhiều trường đại học và các cái ngành công nghiệp thực hiện nghiên cứu cho các cơ quan chính phủ và phi chính phủ khác nhau như là UNFCC, UNEP, hay UNDP hay GIZ. À, ngoài ra thì là ông à, chủ tịch ủy ban phát triển tiêu chuẩn đo lường quốc gia. À, ông cũng có làm việc với cái tổ chức à, là là chủ tịch phát triển tiêu chuẩn quốc gia của Malaysia. À, ông còn làm việc với là giáo sư thỉnh giảng tại trường đại học Kuala Lumpur hay là ở viện Tây Ban Nha của Malaysia. Thế thì là thì bây giờ chúng ta sẽ 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 nghe bài trình bày của ông. À, dear Dr. Horian Gatinato Bris, uh, now we would like to invite you to invite you to have this uh, the the, uh, the presentation about the the battery case and technical requirement and policy uh, for maintenance testing. A recall, recycle, and reuse the factory for the EV. Uh, Dr. Horian, please. Thank you. Okay. Come on, come on. Thank you very much. Um, Choi Bui Chao, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, nice to be here. Klong Nai Tieng Viet. So uh, I'm also going to do this uh, thousand apologies. Um, I bl believe I should be able to share my screen and I will have the application. Um, we will be looking at, okay, you should. So you've got the uh, you've got the uh, title page, yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do, yes. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, as mentioned, um, I do a lot of work in electric vehicle policy, uh, the standards development in Malaysia. And so we have a lot of experience uh, in uh, development of electric vehicles. Uh, we do a lot of combustion vehicles as well, as you can see from some of those pictures. So uh, hopefully I'll only take a little more than 20 minutes to, to talk about this and have uh, some time for questions at the end. So within Malaysia, we have developed a series of different standards for electric vehicles. These include two, three, and four wheel vehicles. And it's everything from bicycles all the way to um, small cars. Of course, there's standard automotive uh, standards for the uh, electric cars as well. Um, in the light vehicle category, the, the two, three, and four wheelers, there's three different major categories that we uh, specify. 
the bicycle class is the vehicles that go less than 25 kilometers per hour. We've got a moped class, which is 25 to 50 kilometers per hour top speed. And then you can see at the bottom, there's motorcycles which are greater than 50 kilometers per hour. There's a lot of new uh, motorcycle type vehicles getting onto the road, but most of the vehicles we see on the road currently are this moped style. So we have different standards for, uh, for safety and quality and things like that. And we even specified a, a minimum range per vehicle. This is to try to eliminate some of the very poor quality product that has uh, very low ranges. You, you'll also notice in each case, we have a minimum battery life of 300 cycles. This results from a survey done with owners of electric vehicles. And a lot of them have mentioned that their biggest disappointment with the vehicles is how many charge discharge cycles the batteries last. Some of them don't last very long at all. And so we've come up with a minimum specification of 300 charge discharge cycles uh, uh, for light duty vehicles relatively accomplish even with the uh, gas series. Um, Malaysia hill tree as southeast and Vietnam, so a minimum hill location on most of our electric vehicle stairs. Uh, it's also tropical and rains. It was just raining very heavily right now. So um, same with Vietnam, we get a lot of things and flooding. So electric vehicles have to comply with some flooding um, uh, standards as well. Now, a lot of these same standards apply to cars and two wheelers. One of the biggest differences though, is that with the cars, they require a dedicated charging station, whereas the smaller vehicles can be charged from any standard uh, 240 volt outlet. Uh, when we to the batteries themselves, there's a lot of standards that can apply. Mostly these are copied from European standards as, as, as was mentioned by the last speaker. Uh, has a lot of battery specific uh, standards and tests in it, power and capacity testing, mechanical testing, you know, drop test and puncture test, um, electrical short circuiting, over charging, uh, water ingress testing, uh, leakage testing, and of course, electromagnetic interference testing. Now, all these standards are available. And of course, we've got these standards for Malaysia. So if anybody's interested in a copy of those, you can get them from me, you can get them online. Um, and they, uh, they will tell you in great detail the battery uh, standards. Um, with batteries and battery recycling in electric vehicles, one of the important things is a label. Uh, we want to make sure that it's always got a label. The battery is labeled with what is the battery chemistry, or what is the power uh, or amp hour capacity of the battery, and if there's any special requirements for recycling, um, of course, you want to have the polarity listed on it, the manufacturer, manufacturer date, and things like that. Um, that's important because uh, later when the vehicle is end of life or is involved in an accident, someone needs to be able to quickly and easily identify the specifications of the battery to see is it a hazard and, and how to deal with it. So in, in, uh, in our standards, as mentioned, we have come up with battery life cycle. Of course, range testing is also important, and these are usually done on chassis dynamometers or uh, in the case of film, and then you test the battery pack. And this is kind of a new thing. Most, uh, most existing standards don't specify a charge discharge cycles for the batteries, um, but we've, been, we've begun doing this on, on all uh, classes of vehicles because it is uh, basically the number one uh, customer complaint about electric vehicles. Um, of course, for range testing, you want to make sure that it's done consistently. So generally, this this involves automated uh, testing on a chassis dyno of some sort. Uh, we do this a lot. And previously, we would drive the drive cycles by hand. But a lot of the current electric vehicles, even the two-wheelers, can last a very long time. So it winds up being a test that you have to ride for like eight hours a day, which is a very long time. So generally, all of this is automated. Um, the, the company I run here in Malaysia actually makes a lot of this equipment. We do a lot of uh, road verification testing as well. And what you can see at the bottom is these were electric bicycles. 
uh, the same electric bicycle with two different battery packs, a lead acid and a lithium ion. And you can see that clearly the lithium ion uh, gave it further range and was much smaller and lighter. But of course, it was also more expensive. That's one of the trade offs. Um, when we start talking about battery recycling, one of the things that I like to start with is how much uh, how much money is there actually in a battery? How much can you recuperate from it? So this is an analysis of some automotive uh, automotive electric vehicle batteries and uh, how, how what is the value? It turns out that you can recuperate somewhere between one and four dollars per kilo. That's US dollars per kilo of battery uh, if it's completely recycled. Um, now, how to recycle it generally is done in two stages. The first stage is the dismantling of battery pack. And at that stage, there's a lot of materials, wires, and things that can be recycled. The final stage would be actually dismantling cells, and that's much more difficult. So in some of the countries that we work with, uh, developing electric vehicle battery recycling schemes, a lot of them just opt for tearing the battery pack apart and recycling the simple little materials, the wires and the case. The cells themselves are just too difficult for them to uh, recycle. So those are sent back to or sold back to uh, usually an electric battery manufacturer. This is a kind of a schematic diagram of what would happen if you've got a, a dead electric vehicle as shown on the left, you'd pull the battery out and transport it to a recycling center. At the recycling center, um, you would generally want to uh, tear the pack apart and recycle the easily recyclable materials from the battery pack. And then some of the cells can either be reused or, uh, or you send them for recycling. Now, when you send them for recycling, usually the cells have to be ground down and they can be uh, separated electrically or smelted or, or hydro-metallurgically separated. That's a very difficult uh, process. Um, it's, it requires some, you know, anytime you get grinding the cells, there's a lot of safety uh, issues involved. And usually this is only economically viable when you've got very large volumes. So. Here's a, here's a drawing of a plant where you would recycle the individual cells. And you can see we're, we're talking about heavy equipment in there. Um, usually you'd need maybe hundreds of tons per day to uh, justify a plant for recycling these batteries. And in a lot of the smaller countries, uh, I'm assuming in, including Vietnam, this is not gonna be something you're gonna need to worry about for the next uh, 20 years maybe. Um, when it comes to electric battery handling, there are a lot of safety concerns. Uh, everyone's, uh, a lot of people are afraid of electric vehicles or electric batteries simply because they're new. Um, they, just because they're new does not necessarily make them more dangerous. Uh, there's very few things that are more dangerous than the petroleum tank in a conventional automobile. Um, however, there are some, uh, precautions that should be taken with uh, electric batteries and electric vehicles in general. So we'll talk about that next. So there's a, uh, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, sort of like rules that you want to follow for electric battery handling to make sure it's safe. And these were developed uh, by various different uh, organizations, uh, including surprisingly some of the navies because the navies use uh, submarines and submarines are propelled electrically underwater. So they have rather extensive uh, safety guards for handling the batteries. So to begin with, um, we want to make sure that damaged batteries are only handled by people that have training for handling uh, electric vehicle batteries. You don't want you don't want um, you know firemen or policemen or someone at an accident site to be grabbing electric batteries and playing with them because they could be very dangerous. Um, before you transport any electric batteries, they should be discharged. And in fact, generally before you store a lot of the electric batteries, especially the lithium-ion batteries, they should be discharged as well because they'll tend to degrade if they're, they're stored fully charged. Um, the third item down there is battery discharge should be performed very carefully. Different batteries can be discharged at different rates. And some batteries, like for example, lead acid batteries, uh, you don't want to discharge those before you store them. The lithium ion batteries, you do want to discharge those before you store them. So 
you, you have to treat the batteries appropriate for their chemistry, which is why we want to make sure that they're labeled appropriately. Uh, electric power terminals, of course, should be secured. You don't want loose wires uh, bouncing around and, and shorting out because that can cause batteries to explode. Um, Generally, when you're moving these batteries around, they can be fairly heavy and bulky. Uh, it is recommended to always move them around on trolleys to avoid dropping them. The uh, batteries, if they're leaking or it looks like they could leak, they need to be put in leak-proof trays, obviously. Uh, in case you do come in contact with the electrolyte, some of it can be caustic or uh, um, you know, in the example of standard automotive batteries, lead acid batteries, the acid is definitely not something you want to keep on your body. So if you come in contact with the electrolyte, obviously you want to wash it off as quickly as possible. Um, electric batteries should never be transported in the passenger cabins of vehicles. And, uh, you know, you really do need to be transporting these on a truck and outside because there are instances where they have either begun to leave. You don't want to store these batteries in uh, any habited area, any place where there's people. And uh, generally, electric battery storage facilities need to be clearly marked and identified so that you know this is for electric batteries. Um, uh, of course, it's very important to always have the appropriate fire fighting equipment on hand. And for electric batteries, we're usually talking about a type D type fire extinguisher. Um, it's one of the few things that's effective against the lithium uh, fueled fires. Um, of course, uh, when you store the batteries, generally you want to put them in a flame proof container and it's well ventilated. Either um, combustible gases or also smoke in the event of a fire. Um, keeping the batteries away from other batteries or in uh, um, sort of sequestered so that if one battery catches on fire, it won't catch adjacent batteries on fire is also important. So if you're talking about a recycling center, it's, you know, you're going to need a large, um, a large volume dedicated to storage. And of course, it needs to be ventilated and, and, and uh, put together in such a way that batteries cannot burn through your entire factory because that happened, uh, actually happened up in Canada at a battery recycling plant. Um, of course, you want to keep the batteries as cool as possible, right? Uh, heat, heat adds danger. Now, we've got uh, another list here, which is uh, sort of like recommended government policy type things. And this, uh, again, was developed over many years um, relating to some of our standards work and also some of our work with the Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research, uh, who investigates accidents. Um, so, so a lot of these are um, oriented towards product safety. Uh, product safety is very important, but there's also stuff related to information for the consumers. Uh, and then uh, we've got you know, other categories such as uh, quality requirements, you know, the, the vehicle range requirements, that's a quality, a basic quality requirement. Uh, then there's also getting back to the concept of charging or even um, uh, replaceable batteries, getting getting back to interoperability with existing infrastructure. Now, the picture you see on the right, this is the battery health versus age for um, a number of car batteries. These are from, I believe, a Nissan Leaf. And they introduced it with a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack, which had a fairly decent life. You can see the red dot in there indicates the design life, and they wanted to make sure they had at least 80% of the battery capacity after five years, and the original 24 kilowatt battery pack had it. Um, they came out with an upgraded version that had a 30 kilowatt battery pack, and you can see the initial data on that showed that it has a much lower uh, lifespan. So essentially, it fails the design point. Well, it's important that consumers have access to this kind of information because um, they, you know, they're paying more for a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it's only going to last half as long in terms of charge discharge cycles as 24. That's an important thing consumers need to know. So vehicle labeling and, and things like that are uh, important for the governments to require. So <clears throat> Um, these these government regulations, these are recommendations that have been come up with, uh, uh, you know, over 
years of, of doing this sort of work. And vehicle labeling is, is certainly very important. A vehicle labeling uh, in terms of the fact that it is an electric vehicle for emergency responders, but also what are the voltages and currents? Um, what is the range expected out of it? Uh, what's the life cycle of the battery? Many countries now require labeling for fuel efficiency on vehicles. Okay, uh, that's that's a very good thing, or or it can be done in terms of CO2 emissions, something like that. Electric vehicles really need the same thing. Um, you know, when you buy a combustion vehicle, uh, you know that if you fill up the tank, it'll go 400 kilometers. You know that 10 years from now, when you fill up the tank, it'll still go 400 kilometers. The problem with electric vehicle is you could buy an electric vehicle that had a 400 kilometer range today, but 10 years from now, as, as we saw in the last slide, it may not be able to go even half that far. Well, uh, the customers need to know this in order to make uh, an appropriate decision. So looking at number two, the manufacturers really do need to give instructions for battery removal, discharge, and any special precautions. They're the ones who know it the best, and you can't expect every mechanic shop to know every single battery's uh, uh, specs for every single battery, right? So um, the manufacturer needs to provide this information, and it needs to be provided on a label on the battery. So looking at number three, yes. Battery labeling is very, very important. It needs to be very obvious so that even 10 or 20 years from now, somebody can look at it and know what needs to be done uh, safely to, to safely take care of that battery. Um, obviously, uh, the government can say that any vehicle or manufacturer that doesn't comply with this would be prohibited from selling in the country, naturally. Um, uh, any vehicle, of course, that is deemed to be unsafe via uh, national road safety regulations should be prohibited. And this isn't anything unique to electric vehicles. This applies to all vehicles. Uh, when we get down to number six, we're talking about battery cycling. Um, the batteries may have a lot of valuable materials in it, but they can also have hazardous material. And so they really should only be recycled by government approved battery recyclers. Um, spent batteries from electric vehicles certainly should not be just thrown away as trash. Uh, you're wasting important resources and potentially causing uh, an environmental problem. So battery recycling uh, really uh, for electric vehicles does need to be uh, regulated. Um, number seven, police and fire responders, uh, they need to be trained in dealing with electric vehicle batteries and accidents, including the handling of them. And, you know, do you put water on it? Do you put foam on it? Things like that. Uh, and that's for their safety and the safety of other people around there. Um, you know, storage of electric vehicles post-accident is also important. There were cases where electric vehicles were crashed and uh, they were they were put on the side two days later, they would uh, explode in flames. So they certainly need to be stored someplace uh, safe. Um, that is a presentation I targeted uh, 20 minutes, which we've hit just nicely. Um, I would like to open it up now for questions and answers. And um, you can just see in, in the screenshot on there, we have some software, uh, which actually has some Vietnamese on it because this is distributed, I guess, uh, fairly widely in uh, Vietnam. So uh, with that, I would like to pass it back to the moderator and see if I can uh, maybe answer some questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Horizon, for very informative the presentation on the uh, all thing about the batteries, uh, battery case, the recycle, uh, reuse, the recycling, and then now we open for discussion. Kính thưa các anh chị, thì chúng ta vừa mới nghe một cái bài trình bày của anh của tiến sĩ Horizon về cái acqui. Thì không biết là các các học viên à À, các anh các chị các người tham gia hôm nay thì có ai có câu hỏi gì à, dành cho tiến sĩ à, Hồ Diên đúng không ạ? Okay, one question that was asked already, and they're talking about license. Um, the electric vehicles, if they go for the motorcycle class and above, if they're going more than 50 kilometers per hour, they are licensed in exactly the same way that combustion vehicles are licensed. Basically, you require um, a driver's license, insurance, road registration, paying road tax, must wear a helmet, and things like that. Um, 
for the bicycle class, 25 kilometers per hour and below. Uh, in that case, you are not required to have a license or any special registration. And now there's this intermediate um, category of vehicles that are in the 25 to 50 kilometer per hour range. And for those, we recommend that you do have a helmet, um, but currently it's not required. And then there's uh, the question of driver's licensing. And the recommendation is that, yes, you need to have a driver's license because the vehicle can potentially go 49 kilometers per hour. So um, the, the licensing isn't specifically broken down differently between combustion vehicles and electric vehicles. It's broken down by speed category. So it's very similar to how most countries deal with uh, bicycles versus uh, motorcycles or something like that. Actually, so may I have one concern that the in in the Ukraine or in the countries so that you can say some information about the household recall requirement for the manufacturers uh, who 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 may in charge of the whole the life cycle of the batteries. So we have any re requirement or regulation for the recalls of the responsibility of the uh, manufacturer. So the question is, we do regulations related recall or the end life of the batteries. In Malaysia, no, not currently. Um, we wanted to implement this and we wanted to make the manufacturers responsible for the batteries at end of life. There's some problems with that though. Um, for example, when, you, when you're a distributor and you buy in bulk from overseas, the manufacturer is in China and uh, you, know, mm. you sell these vehicles through many different very small shops and even small towns and mm. keeping track of the batteries and where they went and how to get them back is uh, very, very difficult. So instead of requiring that the manufacturer take back the batteries at end of life, we simply require that they're labeled that the batteries can be disposed of as trash that they need to be um, disposed of properly, which in this case means taking it to uh, what we're recommending is taking it to a government uh, authorized battery recycling center. Thank you, then. I, I see that we have a two more questions for you on the uh, chat box. Sure, sure. Um, so there's some very good things coming out and talking about the environmental impact of the batteries. For the most part, um, modern lithium ion batteries are actually fairly benign. There's not a lot of uh, problematic materials in them. Of course, you know, when we talked about uh, older versions of batteries, uh, NICADs, the cadmium is a very, um, uh, a very hazardous material, not something you want to have floating about in the environment. Um, lead acid batteries, of course, lead is a potentially harmful material, but it's also fairly valuable and it's very easy to recycle. So we don't generally see people dumping lead batteries. We see that there are actually scavengers that will go collect lead batteries for their recycling. Now, uh, there are some materials used in some batteries that can be harmful, but for the most part, we don't see a huge environmental impact from uh, the lithium ion batteries. And I, I think, uh, you know, the researchers are always trying to improve the capacity of the batteries and they'll use any material that they think will give them uh, an advantage. But I, there's also a growing understanding that you really don't want to have mercury and cadmium and some of these hazardous materials in the batteries. Um, so what are the stakeholders? Uh, should they be government or private enterprise? I, I think it really needs to be both. Uh, what we see in Malaysia in our standards committees is we have a fair representation from government, um, but we also have a lot of uh, people from industry as well. So when you know the government size says, oh, we need to do this or that, the industry side can say, wait a minute, does that make sense? Or, hey, there's an easier way to do it. Like, for example, when we talk about uh, recycling of lead batteries, you know, the government could say, oh, we need to make sure people are not disposing these lead batteries because they're hazardous. And the industry guys look at them and they say, nobody throws away lead batteries because they're very valuable. They're always recycled. Um, okay, so uh, you don't need to waste a lot of time worrying about legislation for recycling lead batteries because there's, there's no issue there. Uh, so yeah, government, uh, government and private enterprise really 
do need to work together. And um, actually, in Malaysia, we've got quite a decent system for developing standards and because it involves um, a pretty good balance between um, the, uh, the government side and the private sector as well. Yeah, one of the other questions was how to handle the uh, waste. And uh, generally, I think, uh, honestly, probably for Vietnam, uh, the best way to do it is to work with the bigger Chinese or, or even Indian manufacturers of batteries and take the, uh, the old cells and sell them to the manufacturers. Uh, those are the guys that are going to be best able to do it. Um, it doesn't result uh, in an environmental problem anywhere in Vietnam. Um, but it, it really should be looked at on a, a battery by battery uh, basis to make sure you're dealing with uh, all of the materials in that battery appropriately. Okay, any, uh, any last questions? I think we've got like two minutes. Tim, that's a no question. Right. No more questions well, come up with us. There's no further questions. Um, okay, no problem, no problem. Um, if there are in the future, feel free to get a hold of me. My email address mm. and everything, and even uh, phone number is on there. So uh, thank you very much. Come on, come on. And uh, again, uh, 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 yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> thank you very much for, okay, thank you all. for that sharing information. Thank you. À, chúng ta vừa mới nghe một bài trình bày rất là chi tiết về về pin thải về về pin và cũng cái uh, xử lý các cái vấn đề có liên quan đến pin thì uh, tiến sĩ Horizon cũng đã nêu nêu với chúng ta rằng là um, ông cũng nêu kinh nghiệm đối với uh, đối với Malaysia thì hiện tại đối với Malaysia thì có rất nhiều uh, cái tiêu chuẩn liên quan đến quy uh, của cho xe điện đã được xây dựng và phần lớn thì họ dựa trên cái các cái tiêu chuẩn của châu Âu thì nếu mà nếu mà nếu mà ai mà quan tâm thì có thể liên lạc với với ông để có các cái thông tin chi tiết hơn ngoài ra thì trong bài trình bày của ông thì chúng ta cũng đã nghe về cái một cái quy trình các cái tiêu chuẩn liên quan đến pin cho từng cái loại phương tiện khác nhau đối với yêu các cái yêu cầu khác nhau À, và trong đấy thì à, thì có có một các cái bước hướng dẫn kỹ thuật rất là cụ thể đối với cái việc mà xử lý à, pin hay tái chế pin đối với những cái trường hợp mà mà pin có sự cố và để đảm bảo an toàn như thế nào thì ông cũng đã đưa ra năm bước thực hiện thì sau này chúng ta có thể um, tham khảo thêm ngoài ra thì ông cũng à, cũng đã có nói đến tất cả những cái chính sách của chính phủ có liên quan đến cái hỗ trợ những cái nội dung này thì là À, trong đấy thì có hai cái vấn đề à, quan trọng đấy là à, cái cái nội dung mà ông kiến nghị đây đấy là chính là à, cái việc là là là, là dán nhãn à, đối với à, xe điện thì là hoặc và dán nhãn đối với cái 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 nhà sản xuất thế thì là à, các cái nhà sản xuất thì là phải đảm bảo rằng là um, cái cái đảm bảo cái tính an toàn của cái ác quy và đảm bảo các cái thông tin minh bạch À, cung cấp chính xác cho cái để cho người tiêu dùng à, có thể lựa chọn các cái um, cái, um, cái cái pin cái, cái quy phù hợp và cũng như là có uh, có các cái, cái 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 quy trình quy định hướng dẫn về cái việc mà sử dụng sau này à, ngoài ra thì ông cũng nêu một cái ví dụ về cái việc mà dán nhãn đối với phương tiện chẳng hạn thì chúng ta cũng đã làm để mà chúng ta có các cái mục tiêu về giảm phát thải à, chỉ số 2 chẳng hạn thế thì là à, thế thì là cái 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 cái, cái phương tiện điện cũng nên dán nhãn do khi mà dán nhãn thì chúng ta sẽ thấy rằng là khi mà nhìn vào cái à, cái 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 chủng loại phương tiện đấy chúng ta hiểu rằng là đấy là phương tiện thuộc loại gì và cái loại quy nào à, có thể phù hợp à, với cái loại phương tiện đấy hay là cũng có một cái nội dung liên quan đến dán nhãn đối với à, đối với à, quy thế thì là ông cũng yêu cầu rằng là phải rõ ràng và phải ít nhất là thông tin rất là rõ ràng và thông tin à, phải 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 có thể là đáp ứng được trong thời gian dài có thể 7 đến 10 năm chẳng hạn để chúng các cái thông tin liên quan đã quy nó vẫn hiển thị rất là rõ ràng để thì để cho các cái hướng dẫn để, để cho các hiểu biết kỹ thuật sau này có thể xử lý được tốt hơn. À, bài tiếp theo thì chúng ta sẽ 